Well, thank you all for attending. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to do a couple of hours of teaching today. And most of this is going to be involved in the relationship of healing. Yeah, how healing works. Yeah. There's a lot involved in the process of humanity and their suffering and the process in which that takes place. And there's very little understanding as to why. Yeah. And one of the things about the human body is that it's self-generating. Yeah. Like when we're a baby, we have this self-generating power that when we're born, we manifest uh, out of light. Yep. So imagine that, that here we are, a little tiny baby, and what happens when we're born? There is a spot of light that manifests, and it's created during the time of our uh, incarnation, you know, when we're conceived. When the egg is germinated and it begins its process of growth, a spark of light takes place. Let me see if I can find that. Check this out. This footage shows the exact moment a sperm makes contact with an egg. You can see what looks like a spark of electricity that erupts on a cellular level. But what is it? And why does it happen? Could it be the start of consciousness? Or is it just a mere biological process that happens whenever fertilization occurs? When a sperm makes contact with an egg, a flash of light is produced indicating that the egg has been successfully fertilized and can now develop into a healthy embryo. This Isn't that a bit amazing? Yeah? But it's our reality. It's how we are manifested. There's light involved. There's light involved. And that's not really part of our scientific investigation. You know, we just go, whoa, isn't that amazing? Well, let's look at what happens when pregnancy begins. The sperm first burrow through the cells of the corona radiata. Then, upon contact with the zona pellucida, the sperm bind to the receptors in the zona pellucida. Then, the enzyme-filled cap of the sperm, called the acrosome, releases its stored digestive enzymes. Finally, the sperm must fuse with the egg plasma membrane. This event causes the egg membrane to change and prevent other sperm from attaching to it. Now attached, the sperm's nucleus, where the chromosomes are stored, enters the egg cell, looking for the egg's nucleus. Egg combines genetic material with the sperm to create a full set of chromosomal DNA with 23 pairs of chromosomes that contain a unique copy of half the genes of the parent source. This is the blueprint for a whole new unique person that instantly determines gender, hair color, eye color, and many other characteristics. The combined sperm and egg is called a zygote. It is the earliest developmental stage. It divides rapidly in the days following fertilization. The zygote then travels down the fallopian tube to the uterus. After fertilization, the zygote continues to divide and morph into a blastocyst ball of 16 cells, approximately five to six days after fertilization. It is smaller than the tip of a ballpoint pen. Only 20% to 30% of fertilized eggs will reach the blastocyst stage. Embryos that survive this stage of development 
have a high implantation potential once transferred into the uterine cavity. The blastocyst hatches out of its shell and burrow into the uterine wall, endometrium, which serves as the source of oxygen and nutrients. About four weeks from the beginning of the last period, near the next period, the blastocyst has begun to produce the pregnancy hormone to tell your ovaries to stop releasing eggs. From then on, the menstrual cycle pauses. The blastocyst is called an embryo now. Home pregnancy tests might be able to get a positive result. That's only four weeks. We're talking a lot of growth here. Yeah. Multiplication, manifestation, coming into completion. Yeah. So here we are, a full-grown person. And what is it that's growing us? It's mitochondria. mitochondria. Mitochondria are found in nearly all cells in the human body. They are the powerhouse of the cell and the reason you breathe and eat food. Mitochondria use food calories and oxygen to create energy in the form of a compound called ATP. So remember that when that zygote began developing, it began developing because of the nutrients that came into it, but it was mainly the mitochondria that was growing the cells, all the cells, and it grows a whole body. We are incredibly reliant on our mitochondria to smoothly and efficiently produce massive amounts of energy. We need so much energy that if you took all the molecules of ATP you made in a day and put it on the scale, it would weigh as much as you. Now think about that. All the molecules of mitochondria that you produce in one day that you should and can and will produce in one day is equal to your weight. Well, what happens if that slows down? Well, we start getting older. We get all the symptoms of aging. We start getting sick. We get all the symptoms of disease. We're susceptible to an enormous amount of lack of vitality, death, and old age, degeneration. And yet, we are created to regenerate. We are created to do that. And every part of our body, but it depends on the mitochondria. What can you do in order to increase mitochondria? We make our body weight in ATP every day. If you messed up this energy supply, things would go haywire rapidly. This is how cyanide kills people so quickly, it damages the mitochondria's ability to make energy. Unsurprisingly, some instances of feelings of excessively low energy or fatigue have been linked to poor mitochondria function. Evolutionary biologist Dr. Douglas C. Wallace is arguing here that medicine focuses too much on anatomy and not enough on animation. That is, the energy production necessary to animate the anatomy. Scientists are starting to see that mitochondrial dysfunction may play a central role in the development of many diseases, including heart disease and Alzheimer's. That's not all that surprising because the heart and brain require massive amounts of energy to work properly. It's also well known that the mitochondria are dysfunctional in obesity and diabetes. In fact, the world's most prescribed diabetes drug, metformin, which is one of the few that also helps patients lose weight, acts on the mitochondria. Okay, but where does vegetable oil come into play in all of this? Well, surprise, surprise, vegetable oils can damage the mitochondria. To make this real simple, you can think of the mitochondria's energy production as a conveyor belt at a factory that's pumping out ATP energy. After your body pulls electrons from the food you eat, complexes and electron transporters pass electrons down this conveyor belt, the inner membrane of the mitochondria. This results in protons being pumped up here and then the protons get sucked into this ATP synthesis enzyme to make ATP. 
Now, the conveyor belt, the inner membrane, has plenty of something called cardiolipin. This is important because this is what's damaged when you consume plenty of vegetable oils. When the linoleic acid from vegetable oils accumulates in your body, you can get what's called a peroxidation cascade, where kind of like dominoes, one molecule of linoleic acid oxidizes and produces a substance that can oxidize another molecule of linoleic acid, and that produces more of that substance that can go on and damage another molecule of linoleic acid, and so on and so on. It's a chain reaction. This chain reaction can go on to affect the cardiolipin in your mitochondria. As this study shows here, when rats eat a linoleic acid rich vegetable oil diet, markers of oxidized fat doubled. And in the heart, the content of cardiolipin, the stuff your mitochondria needs to properly produce energy, was reduced fivefold. In this study, the cardiolipin of diabetic and non diabetic rats reduced drastically when they were fed a vegetable oil diet and the mitochondria of the vegetable oil fed diabetic rats completely collapsed into these crumpled blobs. Even the textbook Recent Advances in Mitochondrial Medicine acknowledges that omega-6 fatty acids like those found in vegetable oil may damage various organs including the pancreas which would worsen metabolic syndrome and type 2 diabetes. That's true. In every case, doesn't matter what the scene is, uh, mitochondria has everything to do with it. So how do we increase our mitochondria? Yeah. Well, we found that red light therapy is one of the biggest factors in increasing mitochondria. Let's talk about skin health. Red light therapy has been shown to improve skin health and also offer anti-aging. It's going to do this through improving collagen production. And this is why so many people who have used red light therapy have noticed, and even in the research, that you'll have less wrinkles. Because as we age, what happens is we get decreased collagen production, our skin gets saggy, it gets wrinkly. So if you want to have that anti-aging benefit and that skin health benefit, red light therapy is amazing. Now let's talk about cellular energy production. This is something that's very cool. Now within the cell, there's something called the mitochondria. Red light therapy has a direct impact on cellular function and also the mitochondrial health. Now, once again, I won't get too deep into the science, but it has an impact on something called cytochrome C. And when... So imagine your body makes the entire weight of your body in mitochondria, in ATP. Every day, every day, you make it, you use it, and you need to make more for the next day. And we do this. We naturally do this. But we need help because we eat these oils that are not animal fats, and we have stress, and we have all kinds of things, injuries, all kinds of things that cause our body to have to produce more and more and more mitochondria than we can. And that reduces the amount of mitochondria in our body. Inflammation, diabetes, emotional stress, all of that reduces mitochondria or, or actually uses up our mitochondria. So even though if we're really, really healthy, we're making a whole body weight worth of mitochondria. But we're not. So we start going through symptoms, wrinkling, dry skin, lack of collagen, baldness, everything all involved in a lack of mitochondria. And you improve this mitochondrial function, what you're going to find is that you have more energy. And so this is another research-backed benefit that red light therapy can offer you. And once again, we're literally putting light on our skin. This is incredible and it's really fascinating. And I think that this is a breakthrough in natural health technology. We know that light heals. We know that the sun heals. We know that using a laser clinically on a swollen joint will help heal it. Well, this red light therapy can heal your entire body in so many amazing ways. Now, it also can help with pain reduction. Reducing inflammation is one of the key benefits, right? And as so the fact is that we need it throughout our entire body. Yeah, you may have pain in your back. You may have pain in your shoulder and your knee and your elbows. Yeah. And you feel, well, I better get myself some red light for that. 
But you're putting it in specific locations, but yet your body makes your whole body weight worth of ATP. That is its potential. That's what it should do every day while you're sleeping, while getting deep sleep, yeah? During the day, while you're eating, yeah? While you're resting and relaxing, yeah? But there are other ways. Doing meditation and red light therapy, full body red light therapy. We know inflammation is a very, very root cause of pretty much every chronic disease, but it's also the root cause of a lot of pain and discomfort. So if we have pain reduction, this is going to happen because of a reduced amount of inflammation in the body and also swelling. It has been shown to help reduce that as well. Now, one of the things I want you to do is trust the science and not the hype. Now, as red light therapy has become wildly popular, one of the things that's happened is so many companies have rushed to market and they've made different red light units and of course they've made wild claims on them and a lot of times they are not good quality and it's very difficult to know what is good quality and what is not. I did a huge breakdown on all the different units out there and basically what I found is that there's a lot out there that are good quality but the price that they're asking for them is so outrageous and then there's ones that basically are saying oh we're red light but they don't have the full spectrum they aren't third party tested they aren't near and far light like you so where he's coming from is that people want help. They want to get this red light therapy. And when they look into it, they find Chinese produced red light therapy on Amazon or Timu or wherever. And it's costing like $18, $25, $200 for, for 500 uh, little LED lights. But the problem is that it doesn't put out much energy. It doesn't put out the frequencies that you need. It doesn't put out a full array of all the different frequencies that you should be getting in order to affect you. So in order for it to be effective, you, you need professional, medical grade red light therapy. And that's really hard to come by. So here is a doctor who's been working on that term PBM therapy, it indicates a form of light therapy that may include either the visible spectrum of light, which is 400 to 700 nanometers, or the near infrared spectrum, which is 700 to 1100 nanometers, which is invisible to the human eye. Instead of using the term uh, photobiomodulation, you'll hear me refer to it as red light or infrared light, because these are the most common terms you'll see on, on the market. It's important not to confuse this procedure with a high-power surgical laser. Here's the difference. Surgical lasers generate a tremendous amount of heat in order to induce blood coagulation and to cut, remove, or resurface tissue. In contrast, infrared light therapy is a non-thermal process that generates extremely li little heat and promotes tissue repair. Okay, on to part two. How does it work? Light therapy uses light photons that come from either the red or the infrared spectrum of light. Red light is the visible spectrum that we can see with our eyes, whereas infrared light is the invisible spectrum of light. This spectrum can't be seen with the naked eye. As a matter of fact, in order to see the infrared light, you'd have to seal yourself in a blacked out room to observe the glowing red lights. Now, this can get rather technical and complicated, and as much as I love this stuff, I don't want to bore you. I'm going to describe how this works in layman terms. On a cellular level, here's what happens. The red or infrared light penetrates the mitochondria of the cell. The mitochondria is known as the powerhouse of the cell because it's the cell's energy factory that makes ATP. ATP is the fuel that powers the functions of the cells, including nerve cells. However, when nerve tissue is damaged, the production of ATP in the cells is impaired which decreases the nerve's ability to regenerate. The more ATP your mitochondria produce, the more rapidly nerve cells will begin to heal and regenerate. Think of it this way. When infrared light hits our nerve cells, they begin to produce more ATP or energy to recharge the nerve cells. Now the main thing about that is that when you buy these much lower uh, frequency, and much lower electrical energy, like in milliwatts rather than watts, they put out a light that will only penetrate the skin 
up to about a quarter inch. So that means it will affect the skin. It could infect inflammation and circulation, but it's not going to affect a lot. Yeah, you, you need something that penetrates more, like a, um, a 30,000 milliwatt, which is three watts. And, you know, with that, you, you can increase the frequency of light transmission, and it pushes it into and through the skin. It will push it through and past the skull, which is a pretty hard, thick uh, material. You know, so that's what had to be worked out, was what light frequencies, what level does it take to penetrate to reach the bone, the cartilage, the skull, and everything. The brain, all different parts of the brain. Much like recharging a battery pack, when the nerve has a fully charged battery, so to speak, it can begin to heal itself very rapidly. High energy equals fast repair. Low energy equals slow or no repair. The energy, or ATP, is the catalyst to jumpstart or resuscitate the nerves. Another important point is when the light hits the cells, it begins to stimulate the release of nitric oxide, or NO, into the bloodstream. And NO is important for many aspects of your health, but its most vital function is vasodilation. This means it can actually relax the inner muscles of the blood vessels, causing them to widen and increase circulation. So why do we even care about circulation when we're talking about trying to repair damaged nerves? Well, this is a question that patients often ask me. They'll say, hey doc, my circulation is perfectly fine, so it's not a problem. Well, the reality is most people have impaired circulation and are you even aware of it. If you think because you don't have varicose veins or your hands and feet aren't cold that your circulation is perfectly normal, well, think again. By the time these symptoms surface, your circulation is already significantly impaired. So you, can, you can't rely on these signs alone. But let's say for the sake of argument that you actually have good circulation. Well, injured nerves rely upon not only healthy blood flow, but an increased blood flow to the damaged site to deliver oxygen and the necessary nutrients that will aid the repair and regeneration of that particular nerve. Nitric oxide will allow this to happen. I released a video called The Miracle Molecule that explains everything about mitochondrial health, the role of nitric oxide in nerve health, and how to increase your NO levels. So if you want to learn more about that, I'll leave a description in the link below. Okay, on to part three. How effective is infrared light therapy? In 2019, there were over 600 papers written on infrared therapy and over 700 randomized clinically controlled trial studies with at least 150 of those being done on humans. So this treatment has been well researched and proven effective. In fact, it's being used for more than just peripheral neuropathy damage. It's been effective with Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, concussion, traumatic brain injury, stroke, depression, even movement disorders, and multiple sclerosis. That's a wide variety. And imagine, you have so many people out there right now with dementia. Every single person that grows older every day is closer and closer to dementia. It's a symptom that we all think is part of our aging process. We're growing old. We can't remember. We don't remember names. We can't remember buildings. We can't remember. But in reality, it's a weakness in our ATB. It's a process of our brain. Uh, slowing down the amount of oxygen, the amount of cellular activity, the cognitive ability, the fogginess of the brain, all of that is reduced by light, by light. The light increases the melatonin that naturally allows us to sleep, to give us hormones. Much of the hormones that we get are from a healthy body. Pain, inflammation and edema. So what does this mean? 
The most established effect of PBM is the stimulation of the enzyme cytochrome C oxidase. This enzyme within the mitochondria improves energy metabolism via three main mechanisms. Uh, PBM is photobiomodulation. You know, it's red light therapy or light therapy in itself. And that's what this is uh, describing. First of all, it will lead to the upregulation of ATP. This means it will increase the performance of the cell and give the cells more energy to repair the damage. Next, there will also be an increase in nitric oxide. And nitric oxide has two main mechanisms or activities. So that doctor mentioned what's really important is that we get an increase of nitric oxide in order to effectively uh, utilize the mitochondria. Red light stimulates the development of nitric oxide and it stimulates the development of mitochondria and ATP. First it can act as a vasodilator so it will increase blood flow to the target tissue and then it acts as a secondary messenger molecule that will also enhance the repair mechanisms of the cells. And finally, it will upregulate the production of reactive oxygen species. Photobiomodulation therapy reduces oxidative stress and leads to repair mechanisms and reduction of inflammatory processes in the cell. So that's what we need. Yeah, there are all kinds of sciences. Yeah, there there brain surgery. Yeah, there's chemistry. Yeah, there's pharmaceutical. Yeah, there's drugs. All kinds of drugs. You know, psychedelic drugs. You name it. Yeah, all to alter the brain. All to hopefully make it better. But that's not the case. The case is that the brain can heal itself that it needs light and it stimulates the mitochondria in the brain. It stimulates the oxygen and the flow of blood in the brain. All that happens naturally, yeah, just through the process of adding red light therapy, photobiomodulation. Yeah. Seems simple, seems ridiculously simple, yeah. And we're talking the whole body and the brain, and the brain. Now the brain's a big one. Most people don't even want to tackle the brain. But how many people are suffering from PTSD? Yeah. How many people are suffering from strokes in the aftermath of a stroke? Heart attacks, concussions, mental illness, depression, yeah, ADHD, so many people growing up with ADHD. And, and it's just a standard process of the imbalance of the brain that's dysfunctioning and causes these symptoms and we give them names. But they're all taken care of very nicely through light. And it's a science involved with the frequency of light, the different type of uh, hertz, uh, like 10 megahertz, or 10 hertz, yeah, or 40 hertz, or one hertz, yeah, and its frequency. All of this, the color of the light, the whole thing, is a science that's involved in the process of our new form of healing. This is for the whole body. We apply it to the brain. Yep, this is called The World of Neurological Research. Breakthroughs shape the future of brain health. This video The World of Neurological Research. Breakthroughs shape the future of brain health. This video summarizes a recent brain photobiomodulation clinical trial by a researcher at the University of California, San Francisco on dementia. Brain photobiomodulation involves the delivery of high-powered near-infrared light energy through the skull to stimulate the brain. This process heals damaged brain cells, improves cerebral blood circulation, reduces inflammation and toxicity, and regenerates damaged brain cells. 
In 2015, a pilot trial by V-Lite, co-authored by Harvard Medical School and Boston University School of Medicine, was the first in the world to demonstrate results with photobiomodulation within a pilot trial for Alzheimer's using the V-Lite Neuro, a home-use device. Fast forward to 2019, Dr. Linda Chow, a professor of psychiatry and biomedical imaging at the University of California, embarked on her own independent study with the V-Lite NeuroGamma to verify the 2015 pilot trial's findings. Dr. Chow's study involved eight participants, diagnosed with dementia, divided into two groups, one receiving usual care and the other undergoing home photobiomodulation sessions with the V-Lite NeuroGamma. The V-Lite NeuroGamma utilizes a specific set of parameters. It emits high-powered near-infrared light at a wavelength of 810 nanometers and a frequency of 40 hertz. The neuro emits the highest power density for a brain photobiomodulation device, capable of delivering more than 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared, in a patented design targeting selected regions of the brain for exceptional outcomes. To measure the effectiveness of this stimulation, various assessments were employed. These included the Alzheimer's Disease Assessment Scale, Cognitive Subscale, and the Neuropsychiatric Inventory. Additionally, MRI scans were taken to delve deeper into the changes occurring within the brain. The results were encouraging. After 12 weeks, the photobiomodulation group showed significant improvements in cognitive function and reduced dementia-related behaviors, as indicated by lower ADAS COG and NPI scores. Cerebral perfusion, or blood flow within the brain, increased, particularly in the parietal regions of the brain, where the light stimulation was concentrated. The most thrilling discovery was the improvements in brain connectivity within the default mode network, a vital system for brain health. These might account for the improved cognition scores in this trial. This study not only validated the groundbreaking 2015 pilot trial, but also paved the way for V-Lite to engage in more rigorous clinical trials to validate the product efficacy such as a 228 participants pivotal clinical trial. With no adverse effects reported, brain photobiomodulation may be a promising avenue to enhance the quality of life for those facing dementia. As science continues to unravel the mysteries of the brain, the future holds promise for innovative solutions that could change lives. The journey of brain photobiomodulation reminds us that with each discovery, we get a step closer to making history in the field of brain research. And so, the story of brain photobiomodulation continues, lighting up the path towards a brighter future for dementia. So if you wonder, what is Christ up to? What is Christ doing? How is Christ going to heal the earth? Well, Christ is a healer. Yeah? And I spend all my time in the realm of science and verify what works, how it works, now, all the way to our spirituality, the chakras, the seven rays, and its relationship all the way down to the physical plane. And we are filled with the process of light, how we react to light, just like plants react to light. Why? Why? Yeah, it's the same effect that we have ourselves. You know, we're along the same kingdom. All the kingdoms are in us. The kingdoms that affect the entire plant kingdom affects us. But yeah, we don't, we don't do anything in relationship to that. We have no idea that we use photosynthesis. Not just from the sun that's outside, but a controlled, scientifically measured, transmitted photobiomodulation that is specifically to affect every single part of our body, our mind, and our soul. Yeah? So we need to move in this direction. Yeah? True science. Yeah? True science also tells us that when the egg is hatched and it grows and it begins its process, its natural genetic construct automatically determines whether it's male or female. Yeah, what color the hair is going to be, what color the eyes are going to be, the whole thing. It's genetically there. You know? And homosexuals, they have for a long time been trying to say, well, we're part of that great truth. You know, 
there are genes that make us homosexual. That's why we can't change. That it's a gene thing. It's not. It's not. Not at all. A new study found there is no single gene that can determine a person's sexual orientation. The Science Journal published what is being considered the largest genetic study on sexual behavior. The research concluded that a person's sexual orientation is shaped by a mix of genetics and environmental factors, as opposed to having a single gay gene. The study took into account the genetic profiles of nearly 500,000 people from the U.S. and U.K. That group is about 100 times larger than other similar studies. But we're in a pretty crazy world. You know, we have a lot of people who are homosexual, lesbians, transgender, bisexual, you name it. Whatever perverted way they want to carry out sex, including animal sex and a little baby sex. Pedophilia. It's a common everyday occurrence in the homosexual lifestyle. That's what it is. But are they born to be this way? They make it up. They make you think that it is. And it counteracts both science and God. If I have a genetic predisposition toward drunkenness, does that make it okay? He'd rather do the opposite and double down on his feminine image, showing up to the Kids' Choice Awards looking like this. Officer pulls me over. Sir, you been drinking? Ossifer, I don't even know. Could you talk to me about like your how you came to like understand who you are, and or if you? I'm four eleven. What would I do if that was a sin? I couldn't do anything about it because that's the way God made. Right, me. sir. You want to get out of the car? Okay, but before I do, you should need to know I got that drunk gene. Are you a woman? Um. Yes, for all intents and purposes, I am a woman. Will a gay person be accepted into heaven as you see it? Well, I believe they will. Maybe one day I will actually be grateful for being trans, that this isn't some curse. Oh. It is a curse. And it's a curse that has been manifested through an atheistic society. How do we get to an atheistic society? How about creating camps for kids to indoctrinate them into atheism? A new movement, the separation of church and summer camp, a wave of atheist camps offering a God-free alternative to the traditional religious camps. ABC's Lindsay Davis brings us a look inside. There we go. 11-year-old Chandler Gary is engaging in a new summer ritual, a week away from home in a bucolic corner of Washington State to attend atheist camp. Why don't you believe in God? I guess, well, there's no proof that God exists. Yeah. It's actually called Camp Quest, and it's where hundreds of non-believing parents send their often faithless offspring to reinforce their passionate lack of belief in the divine. This is Elle's first summer, too. She's nine. I don't believe in him, but if he were to come down and, you know, like, do something really amazing, I would be able to accept that um, he exists. Pretty heady stuff for summer camp. So you guys are all united here in your unbelief? Mm hmm Yes. Yeah. But for so many of these kids, it's a relief to spend time with people like themselves. I don't have any atheist friends or anything, so I'd like to maybe make a couple of friends that live near me or whatever that I can actually go to, uh, go to their house and have dinner, not have to pray before eating or whatever. recently held a parade in New York City where they made it clear they're queer and they're coming for your children. Our first president would have swallowed his wooden teeth. 
No wonder parents are pushing back against gender fluidity instruction in public schools. Christians are standing up, not discriminating against gays, but against childhood indoctrination. They're also opposing unrestricted abortion, and for that, churches are under attack. The most recent, $100,000 in damages done to the Fowler's UMC Church in Anne Arundel County, Maryland. We don't know if the vandals acted simply out of anger against God or because the church had taken a moral stance on a controversial issue. Uh, then get your kids out of government school. You're not doing them any favors by sending them on the front lines uh, when they are five and six years old to try to defend the worldview that you were teaching them. Um, keep them at home and keep them under your care and authority for as long as you can to prepare them for the craziness that's out there. And what if you can't? What if you're in a, a circumstance, you know, you're a single parent, I, this right. is, you know, you, you work all day, you got to send your kids. And this is, this is kind of the trap that the government perfectly uh, provides for a lot of, you know, yeah. impoverished families is you were basically your daycare, yeah. right? Um, what if you can't? H how do you combat your child going into a kindergarten class? And this is actually the circumstance in some schools where they are allowed to call your child by a different gender all day and they're right. not required to tell the to parent. Tell I can't wrap my head. To me, that is Satan, right? Yeah. Satan is the author of lies and deception. And yeah. when I look at the face of this trans movement and this trans agenda and confusing kids, kids are already confused about everything, you know what I mean? And our job is to tell them what the truth is. Um, and when I see that, I think this is actually satanic. And I just don't know what we say to those parents who can't afford yeah. to take their kids yeah. out. They're right. Satanic is a good point. How much of transgender is satanic? Now, how is it possible to even consider transgender being satanic? What if God judges us? I know you don't believe in God. And if you do believe in God, you don't really believe in the authority of God. So with all this, you know, drags, queens, men dressed up as women and taking positions in sports, female sports, uh, taking positions in the White House as being the number one woman, but yet you're a man. Taking position in a beauty contest, and yet it's a man. You know, taking positions, you know, to be able to walk into a girl's bathroom, and yet you're a man. Go into a girl's gym and go into the privacy of a bathroom and undress in front of girls in a locker room. Yep. And yet we go, oh, why not? Well, I think God's gonna, God's gonna judge our ass. They see these sins and go, because of these sins, God's judgment is going to come on America. What's going on in Florida is, as my mother would say, close to sinful. No! If you see these sins, God's judgment has already come on America. Thank you to my fans, to God and the gays. Congratulations! Because the sin here, and this is what makes me so angry, the great sin here. But you don't get to take the Bible and tell me, well, the Bible says this, in this chapter, in this verse, I don't care. It's not what you think. It is not what men do to themselves or what men do to men. If people didn't invent gods, I wouldn't have to deny them. And it's just... <laughs> but... but. 
they're kind of losers. I forgot how useless men are nowadays. We need to kill all men. Life's too short to exercise. I'm just going to be honest. There are so many better things to do than exercise. One day a week, men should get a curfew so that women can go on walks. To me, I think they're so much more important than they are. Like, that's what we don't saying. even need y'all for a good net no more. When you do that and there's like muscles there, nobody cares about that. It's okay to be weak, weak, weak. <laughs> You're all replaceable. Don't ever get too comfortable and don't ever think otherwise. I've cheated plenty of times in my life, by the way. I kind of think everyone deserves a one-time cheat. Men are not meant to be dominant. Men are meant to be submissive. Because men do not have the ability to think for themselves. People don't realize that fat phobia is rooted in racism. If you are intentionally losing weight, it is fat phobic. Do you think men are important? <laughs> like for what? <laughs> Beginning Easter weekend, a local group of atheists will target kids with perhaps their biggest campaign yet. The effort aims to reach children and their families everywhere from movie theaters to through billboards. Fox 4's Dion Anglin live in our Fort Worth newsroom tonight with the details on this ad campaign. Dion. Well, that's right. Local families who do not believe in God are featured in this ad campaign. The DFW Coalition of Reason is quite aware of the message and its timing will turn heads. And we never tell our kids, you need to be an atheist. Um, we tell them that we love them. Will and Angel Crowley's two daughters, 12-year-old Lily and 8-year-old Ella, understand their parents don't believe in God. She was just like, huh, you're not going to church. Huh? Okay. The entire family is part of an upcoming atheist ad campaign that targets kids. It begins Easter holiday weekend. This is what the Crowley's billboard will look like along I-30 in Grand Prairie. One of their daughters is not pictured. Three other families who are part of the DFW Coalition of Reason will also be featured, each for one week. As well, the group has paid for ad some kids books to help teach kids about atheism. Well, I'm a Christian actually, so I probably wouldn't be interested. This first one here is uh, James and the Giant Void. Oh, it sounds wonderful. It's about the story of one kid who discovers nothing. Well, if you like to read pointless books, then sure. The BFG, the big fake god. We're, we're both Christians, so we kind of don't fully agree with this. Mm -hmm. In that sense, well, then we what believe that there is a god, so and yeah, he's not fake. Oh, you uh, don't want to mess them with that shit. When they're that little, you want to give them hope. Well, you probably won't like this one then. This is um, why am I here? No reason, really. Yeah, no, I don't like that one. Well, you have to have some moral in the story when kids read a book, so. But isn't the moral that it's all pointless? Spot ponders his existence. Uh, I think we'll leave it there. Thank you. You don't want it. There's probably no god. The message is as bold as the lettering. There's probably no God. Paid for by atheists and skeptics, including Guy King of Kelowna. He belongs to the Okanagan Center for Inquiry. Well, I don't see that it's an insult. The ad on the bus is a pretty innocuous ad, I think. There's probably no God, okay? But, you know, nobody can say, I can't prove a negative, so nobody can, you know. It's, you, you can't say there isn't one, but... There probably isn't. All the evidence suggests that there is no such thing as a god. Such a bold statement deserves a response, but Pastor Mike Peninga doesn't see anything wrong with the billboards or the message. I really respect the ad. It says there's probably no god. And he's gay. So there's a lot that all of you are unaware of that's causing you to become weak. Taking away your will. What's will? Will is strength, courage, ability. Yeah, but all of it is being completely drained from your very being. 
by words and pronouns and homosexual and feminists and the LGBT and all of it is a lie. It's a lie. But you, you have to defend it. You have to defend an absolute lie created by Satan. You have to defend it. You don't have any rights to not defend it. You must defend it. Yeah, because it's all about rights to be evil. It's okay to be evil. It's okay to be an atheist. It's okay to be LGBT. It's okay to take your children and, and have their genitals cut off and all these things. Yeah, it's okay. But it's not. And you're going to find that it's not okay. And you're going to get healed. And you're going to get a clear state of consciousness. And all these things are going to go away because of health. Only because of health. It's a lack of health that makes you think in these terms. You just have no idea. You're so unhealthy. You have no idea. Look how, look what they can do. American to you. politician is receiving death threats from trans activists after he himself came out as trans. Delaware Councilman Ryan Webb was, until a few weeks ago, a straight white male. But he recently told constituents that he now identifies as a lesbian woman of color. A councilman is coming out as a transgender, as transgender and a woman of color. Delaware County Councilman Ryan Webb announced that he now identifies as an Indian American woman. Since that announcement, he's received some support, but a lot of backlash, many calling him childish, despicable, even calling for things like execution. Now imagine what this does to people. Everybody, every single person has to deal with this. They have to think, well, is, is, is LGBT even a thing? Is it real? You know, my son's crazy. My daughter's crazy. Tattoos everywhere. So what's going on? There must not be a God at least. You know, it's just all free speech. You know, freedom to do what you want. And that is where we're at. You know, we're very, 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 very unhealthy. And we need to work toward health. So I'm pushing people to start getting these lights, start getting these technologies, start getting these things that, that help you with red light therapy and things of that nature. Because children are getting strokes. What do you do about children who get strokes? The part of her brain that was infected in the stroke was the part of retaining, understanding, comprehending. So um, she really, really struggled. We started changes pretty quick. I would say like three weeks maybe, um, where we really started noticing the cognitive. Her scores went up so high after we started. But without this red light, these kids just suffer and live the rest of their life, usually going off into a wheelchair, going into crutches, unable to, to walk carefully, see well. Their health is diminished year after year because there's no real treatment. There's just pharmaceutical stuff and surgery and, you know, rip it out, put something new in, you know, try, try this, try that. But this is an answer. It goes all the way back to when we were first born, a point of light manifests. And we are light. What we are is a generation of electricity manifested in light. In angelic terms, it's called Metatronics. And we are that. What about people who go to war? What about people who get beat up during their regular life and come out with PTSD? What usually happens to those people? They end up in the street. They end, we don't have mental institutions anymore, so they're all in the street. We don't know how to treat them. We got rid of the mental institutions because we don't know how to treat people. We're, we're putting holes in brains. We're doing electric shock therapy. Come on, that's about as barbaric as you can get when you don't know what to do. And this is what we do. We treat with light. Now everything, psychology, medicine, everything 
that was at a stopping point to her. What can we do with these children that have strokes? What do we do? People who come back from war, what do we do? Near infrared light phototherapy has been studied for over 30 years in laboratory studies, animal studies, and human clinical trials. Current data indicates that near infrared wavelengths of between 600 and 1,000 nanometers are absorbed by the cytochrome C oxidase in the mitochondria. This increases ATP and activates secondary molecular and cellular events. Early response genes are activated and the expression of numerous genes is altered. In fact, research shows that there is increased transcription of over 100 genes, in particular cell survival genes, neural differentiation factors are transcribed, synapse formation is increased, and growth factors are activated. In a companion paper, we detail the factors regulating the penetration of near-infrared light through skin, bone, tissue, and brain. Our studies have shown that low-power infrared light in the middle of watt range. So this is what I was saying. When we're in megawatts, which is the a very, very small amount of wattage, imagine that there's one watt. That would be 1,000 megawatts. And in most of the light therapy that had been out uh, is in low light therapy, like 50 to 500 milliwatts. That means one half a watt or one fifth of a watt. Yeah. So here in the higher power, we can pass through the skin, make it into the muscles, get into the tendons, on into organs and into muscles and everywhere that it's necessary where there are cells that are depleted, circulation, inflammation, everything is there, but we can't do anything about it. The type of red light that we're using is far too weak. So that has changed, that has changed does not penetrate a full thickness section of human skin. We've also found that low power devices do not deliver any significant infrared energy to a depth of three centimeters into the brain. These findings in our lab and other laboratories support the use of higher powered infrared light sources. We have used infrared lasers in the power range of 10 to 15 watts treat patients with traumatic brain injury. In a series of 10 patients with traumatic brain injuries, all in the mild to moderate categories, and duration since injury ranging from months to 10 years, we have found clinical improvement in all cases. 40% were male and 30% had obtained their head injury in the military service. Let's hear about their symptoms. Some patients were depressed and suicidal. The mean quids, quick inventory of depression symptomatology score was 25.3. After a series of 10 to 20 near infrared light therapy treatments over the course of eight to 10 weeks, the patients all had complete resolution of sleep disturbances, improved headaches, improved depression symptoms with no suicidal ideation. The quids, score fell to 2.2. Most patients had less anxiety, much less irritability, and their marital relationships had improved. You're, you're able to move easier, or use your hands easier, or talk easier. Yes, especially my speech. I've noticed really my speech has gotten a lot more fluid. It didn't happen overnight. It has multiple treatments, but you notice The change in symptoms and function has not been transient. The duration since treatment ranges from 12 to 48 months. It's, it's, it's given me a new life or a new opportunity to, after 30 years of stagnating. Yeah, I know, I'm still seeing the benefit. I'm still seeing the benefit after. 
date, there has been little progress in developing effective treatments for chronic mild to moderate TBI or repetitive concussions. Your infrared phototherapy has shown promise as a tool for the treatment of TBI. A critical issue is to assure that adequate photonic energy reaches the injured areas of the brain. The use of high wattage lasers, as we have demonstrated, results in marked clinical improvement in patients with chronic TBI. Moreover, symptoms consistent with PTSD, anxiety, and or depression also improve considerably or resolve in this group of patients. Further work in the use of complex multi-watt near-infrared laser therapy in the treatment of TBI, depression, PTSD, anxiety, and other neurological disorders is encouraged. So what I've done is that uh, I've been doing this work since about 19, early 75. And uh, I, that's when I was in college in uh, experimental psychology, sociology, anthropology, and medicine, and physics. And so my interest at that time was light and biofeedback in relationship to the brain. And I couldn't get anybody to follow through on the light. The light that was available was far too weak. And there was not enough research to verify whether or not it would do any harm or good. You know, so I waited through the years. But I did develop biofeedback and other things. So over that time, we now have uh, a really good medical-grade industry light therapy. And this is what I recommend. This is a, um, a company called Platinum uh, uh, LED, and it's also made by Biomax. And what it is, oh, oops, let me show you this. Oh, yeah, what it is is that the this is a stand you're looking at, but you can also see the light that is a panel that's uh, hanging on it. And that is, uh, I recommend uh, the call, it's called the 900 series. And it's this one here. And the Biomax 900, yeah. And it's a wider uh, uh, system. And what I've done, I've taken four of those and connected them together and put them on this motorized stand. And uh, you have then the ability to have the most powerful uh, light module that is on the planet. And this is the platinum LED, the one that I just showed you. And it shows if you look, it, you'll see that it has seven different frequencies, 480, 630, 660, 810, 830, 850, and 1060. And all these frequencies have a different effect on the body. And they're all done with high uh, wattage. Yeah. So the amount of uh, power it has for it to pass through the skin, pass through the skull, get to the bones and all those things. It also requires these frequencies because each frequency goes a little deeper. Each frequency triggers a different thing. So by having all these seven frequencies, which is the only one on the planet that has this, you know, then you're laying under it, you're doing your whole entire body. Yeah. So that radiates into your body, head to toe, and then you roll over and you do the back. And so this is what I'm making available in all of our soul therapy centers. It's for all the Sangha and it's for all the community that decides to come into our center and uh, receive what it is that I'm giving to the world. 
Yeah, and this is one of a lot of things that I am applying uh, in my work. You know, so the light therapy is that's for the full body. Now, like I said, your entire body, your entire body weight is generated ATP in order to regenerate and create your lungs, your brain, all of that. Every seven years, your body regenerates. Yeah, this is how it's happening. Yeah, is through the mitochondrial functioning of cellular generation. And it's been happening since you were born, since you were a little zygote. It's been going on. So we need to practice what God has given us. Yeah. The fact that we can heal ourselves, all of us. Imagine you have diabetes and you have no idea the lingering symptoms that are going on. Your circulation is very bad. So quite often people can't feel their toes. They can't feel their feet. It has numbness. That goes on and on. Many years later, you find out that they lost circulation and their toes are turning black. Well, now they have to cut off the foot. This is not uncommon to lose a limb due to diabetes because of symptoms that are ongoing. Yeah. Well, multiply that by a thousand. Your heart is included in that. Your liver is included in that. Your brain is included in that. All your organs, all your lymphatic system, your entire body needs operating process of mitochondria. It needs it. So I'm providing this particular light as a treatment. Yeah. And I'm providing other things. Your brain learns from feedback. Learns from Through live like visual feedback of what your brain is doing, you can, brain you can naturally train it to function better. Biofeedback and other devices. Yeah. The Violite, yeah, which is for your, your main uh, process of healing your brain. Yeah, which is one of the most important things we'll ever do is heal ourselves. And you can. You're stuck in a situation to where the doctors say, I don't know what to do. It's just beyond me. You know, what, what is the process? How do we do this? You know, to what degree does cancer even happen? Yeah. We're in quite a boat here. We're in quite a boat. And we need help. And I'm going to help. It's not a big, big process. It's a little process. And you yourself are responsible. Yeah. For biofeedback, I recommend this. In today's distracted digital today's age, distracted we are challenged to focus and manage stress. And manage this stress. impacts all aspects this of our lives and stops us from reaching our potential. At Sensei, we harness neurotechnology to accelerate personal development. Brain waves are electrical patterns waves, made by brain cells, cells when communicating with each other. These patterns can be measured in strength. So you would think as Buddha, as Jesus Christ, I'd be telling you, sit down, meditate, do the Om. I do. I have been doing that for years and years and years. But along the same time, I've also been a psychologist and a doctor. So I know all this stuff. And I've been slowly but surely waiting to get it to you. Because these things are very important. You do need to meditate. You do need to calm down. You do need to activate portions of your brain in ways that will motivate the brain to be a more compassionate, empathetic, understanding, clear-minded brain. And we're all going to do this. And it's not a cult. It's not a religion. It's the science of God. And you need to heal yourself. And speed, using and EEG speed, sensors using at EEG specific sensors locations, at on your head. locations on your head. Over the past 50 years, past neuroscientists 50 years, and clinicians neuroscientists have developed techniques to modulate brain waves to improve brain function. Neurofeedback is one such technique which converts EEG data into audio and visual cues to guide users towards desired states of mind.
Neurofeedback is a workout for your brain, and like a workout, it leads to long-term trait changes. Quality EEG feedback is critical to quality training. Sensei Sensor Technology is the first to read clinical-grade signals in an easy-to-use consumer device. So imagine, what I'm proposing here is that we use light therapy to do the natural healing on the brain or, and on the whole body. But we got to do it all. We can't just do, oh, I have a sore back, I'm going to treat that. You have everything going on. You have dementia coming your way. You have a heart attack coming your way. You have death coming your way. You have illness and old age. All of this is coming your way. You need to overcome it. And you can. Yeah. So imagine you're transmitting light into your brain and it is creating mitochondria, which is creating the ability for the elasticity of your brain to heal and communicate and create synapse. So now you're gonna do biofeedback on top of that. And you're gonna help train the brain to reestablish new networks, new ways of thinking, new ways of feeling, so that when you deal with your everyday life, by the time I'm done with you, you're going to be a saint, naturally, naturally. Transcranial photobiomodulation using infrared light has been a field of research and clinical work for the last 15 plus years. This light energy stimulates your brain cells and encourages blood flow and oxygen distribution. So this particular unit called the Sensei combines both light therapy and biofeedback EEG, which is incredibly important, incredibly important. Simultaneously, you're giving positive nutrition of light to your brain, increasing the oxygen, increasing blood flow. And simultaneously, biofeedback is happening. So your mind is sensing that this is what's going on. So your thought process, the way that you're meditating is activating more. And you're measuring that in the EEG. And then you react to that through the biofeedback. So your biofeedback begins a transmission of software so that you're witnessing what's happening. Like you're looking at a tree and it's filling up with light in leaves every time you increase more and more blood into your brain, more and more oxygen into your brain. That's your biofeedback. We combine transcranial we combine photobiomodulation in our solution to improve solution neurofeedback to training improve results. Neurofeedback this results. also gives the immediate also felt also state change felt that helps change keep sensei, that users sensei, motivated. sensei users motivated. Finally, we connect heart Finally, and mind. Heart Research, and shows, mind. A Research shows a direct connection between brainwave patterns and heart rate patterns. patterns heart rate Sensei patterns. uses heart rate variability Sensei training rate variability to guide training users to personalized to heart, heart, coherence. heart coherence. This induces a relaxed this nervous system and brainwave pattern to boost training impact. MindSense is a world-first combination world of these techniques, of enabling techniques, Sensei to offer sensei quantified, to offer accelerated, quantified, and personalized brain and training personalized in an easy-to-use consumer easy format consumer for, everyone's format every day. for everyone's every day. This is something you do at home. You do not need a psychologist. You do not need a therapist. You know, you do not need uh, someone who is going to be your coach. You know, your meditation coach or your life coach or whatever. You don't need that. What you need is good tools and good direction and apply yourself daily, every single day. And then I also recommend that you get a Violite or a different type of device that, that is um, a light-filled helmet that sends light into your brain, all over your brain. Yeah, but this is one particular one that does that very thing. Yeah, it's called Violite. Now it transmits light into the rear, the sides, and the front cranial of your brain, along with a nasal cannula light that goes up your nose and into and under through your nasal cavity under the front of the brain. 
and that is incredibly effective. You need light in those areas. Yeah, you're not only fixing your sinuses, but you're fixing your brain. The world of neurological research, breakthroughs shape the future of brain health. This video summarizes a recent brain photobiomodulation clinical trial by a researcher at the University of California, San Francisco on dementia. Brain photobiomodulation involves the delivery of high-powered near-infrared light energy through the skull to stimulate the brain. This process heals damaged brain cells, improves cerebral blood circulation, reduces inflammation and toxicity, and regenerates damaged brain cells. In 2015, a pilot trial by V-Light, co-authored by Harvard Medical School and Boston University School of Medicine, was the first in the world to demonstrate results with photobiomodulation within a pilot trial for Alzheimer's using the V-Light Neuro, a home-use device. And that's incredible. How many people do you see on TV that has Alzheimer's? And yet, all they're doing is suffering. They can't get up, they can't walk, they've lost stability. It's terrible. And all they can think of is, I have to take these pills, lots of pills. But this works. This works. It's very passive. There's no drugs involved. So there's no side effects that come from that. So what happens if you get this red light therapy for kids? You have a home, you have family, you have children, and you need red light therapy. You have a husband, you have a wife, yeah? They need red light therapy. It's hard getting through the day. You need to do these therapy. You need a therapy room. So people go in and sit down and put their red light therapy on their head lay down on the bed and receive enormous amount of red light therapy. It's not empty quasi medicine. It's real. It's highly valid. Yeah. Look what it could do for kids. The only thing we could do for him would be extra school support, but there was no other medical stuff that could be done for him. The brain is such a complex, is such a complex, complex organ, complex and when organ. people think when cognitively, people think they think in patterns. Think Sometimes in those, patterns. those cognitive Sometimes patterns cognitive crisscross, patterns or something crisscross. happens and you have a roadblock. So the cognitive pattern, so you can't think from A to B, or, or you think and it's confused. So what happens is, is lasers can help remove some of those roadblocks at the cognitive level. So it allows the cognitive learning pathways to happen on a more even, consistent basis. And I've seen that with the proof and the testing, and also just in the demeanor of some of the patients that have come in day one versus six weeks out. So we tried it, and the results were like much better. I could read better, I could comprehend, and I could understand and do better at what I couldn't have done before. It's improved a lot where he can do more stuff on his own now. We don't need to get him the extra help like we needed to before. The brain is able to function in a more normal rhythmic pattern as a result of photobiomodulation. So this is, this is what I'm working on. 
and uh, you have to put it into effect. I I don't just make etheric weavers. You know, I don't just make you know radionic devices of bioresonance. That is quantum. It's quantum science. Very high level science. You know that that was my initial process of establishing that when I was around nine years old. But I was also working in the area of knowing that this is what's healing our etheric body. And we have no idea what the heck I'm talking about when I say etheric body. Yeah. But there is a trigger within the etheric body that totally aligns to light, frequency of light, the regenerative value behind photosynthesis, photomodulation. Yeah. We react to it. Our cells react to it. We can't explain it. Yeah. We, when we shoot the red light, proper amount of red light and a proper frequency into the body and take a test and see how much mitochondria, how much ATP is developed, it's enormous. It's enormous. And then we ask the person, how are you symptomatically? And the pain is gone. They have vitality. They're up and running. They're doing whatever they can. And they're sleeping well. These are all things unexpected. You know, that that uh, red light therapy has brought about. So imagine, you know, your whole family needs this. This needs to be the foundation of, of birth. When a baby's born, you need to have a, a, a baby go into red light therapy at least two to three times a day. Yeah? And there are devices that, that work really well for children. You know, that, uh, not everything is all that expensive now here look at this here we have you can see the biomax 300 and the biomax 450 they're both the same height but the 450 is many many more light modules yeah and so basically these are small panels that have the same basic effect as the very large panel. So you can have these sitting on a table and just sit in front of it and radiate yourself. Yeah, You can put it on a stand and have it pointing down at you, laying on a bed. Without doing the entire body, you can do sections of the body at a time. That's only $659 for your entire family to be healed, for a baby to live, you know, past birth and, and live a good life. Yeah, help them grow in every level. When kids go to school, look at that little boy. He could not read, he could not do his education. He could not be the kid that he was meant to be. But after red light therapy, he was fine. And this is something that could be done at home and should be. And we all need to take this into effect. Yeah. Everything I'm telling you has nothing to do with religion. But your, your mental illness, which you're not aware of, your inflammation, which you're not aware of, your diabetes, which you're not aware of, yeah, you need to be aware of. You need to heal it. Yeah. I tell people you should put a glucose monitor on. You can buy a Libra 3 glucose monitor that sticks onto the back of your arm, has a probe that goes into your skin, and it sends via Bluetooth to your telephone what your glucose is about every, at live, basically about every 10 minutes. So you see this constant flow. And when you eat something and your glucose goes peaking up to 250, you now have the opportunity to go, well, I better not eat that because I don't want my glucose over 120 all day. And I don't want my glucose below 90 all day, all night. So I need to monitor it and take charge of that. Yeah, lower my carbohydrate intake, lower it. things that are causing it to go up. And every time I eat and I see that spike, 
I know what did it. That helps. Same thing with uric acid. Uric acid is the biggest cause to liver cancer, many different things in the body, yeah. gout, inflammation, heart attack. Uric acid, of all freaking things, seem to be so simple, but it needs to be monitored. Yeah, and you can't just do it with a spit on a stick <coughs> and check check how that comes out. You have to do it with a a, a a pin stick on your finger and get a drop of blood, and that goes on to a test monitor. And you get a very accurate reading. You need that. Yeah, you need that. In between meals, so you know whether or not you are at a high level of uric acid all day long and you can't be you have to change you could be eating far too many things that cause uric acid so you need to study you need to drink lemonade you need to drink a lot more water you need to drink some coffee some tea things that help to reduce uric acid yeah don't eat large amounts of things that cause more uric acid. Some people don't have a uric acid problem, so test it, find out you don't, and don't worry about it. Yeah. So glucose, uric acid, two very important monitors. Blood pressure, very, very, very important monitor. Not just whenever you go to the doctor, you get your blood pressure done. And it's never good because when you go to the doctor, it's always up because everybody gets a little nervous. But you need to do three blood pressure checks all at the same time, one right after another. They'll all be a little different. Yeah, you take the mid one. Yeah, if it's 130, 120, and 116, break that down into what that would be as a median. Yeah, same thing with diastolic and systolic. And that's your blood pressure. And you do that a couple times a day. And if you find you have a high or low blood pressure, you need to do something about it. And it's not hard. It's just that you have to take control. It's your ignorance that's going to kill you. So you need to monitor. You need to. As time goes along, I have devices that are coming out, which are like the Aura Ring, like this. Yeah. Or the, it's called a Ring Con. Yeah. Both those are just like the Aura Ring or something like this. That right there, this right here. Oops. There, that right there, yeah. This is called a whoop, yeah. So I got three devices, three devices on me that monitor me at all times, yeah. And I also do other things, you know. I have right back here, I have on the back of my arm, a glucose monitor. And it's always monitor me at all times, yeah. I do uric acid tests, monitoring at all times, yeah. But I also do things in order to make sure that I'm getting better. I get inside this red light twice a day. I do one half hour on the front, one half hour on the back. I put the violite on. I do the gamma and I do the alpha first thing in the morning. Yeah. And then I have another one that is a bigger helmet of light. I put that on, you know, give it a big dose. Yeah. And that's my beginning of a day. And then I have more. Later in the evening, I do another panel of light on the front half of my body, where in the morning, I do the back half of my body. And this is very powerful light, really powerful light, for at least a half hour. Yeah. And if I have any other areas, my back, my foot, my shoulder, I have devices that go on those areas throughout the day and they get treated every single day. 
until my mitochondria had built up and established a healing process. Because all these areas are degenerated over time. It's just what happens with the body. You gotta accept that. So we have to make specific active healing processes in our lifestyle. We have to. And it takes up a lot of our time. Yeah? So having something like like this, a really powerful panel that actually works. Don't get something off of uh, Amazon because that's what you can afford. It's not going to help you. That doesn't make any sense to do that. Save your money. Buy the $659 one. That If you can only afford that. Buy the $799 one if you can afford that. Buy the $1,299 one if you can afford that. Buy four of those and put them on a large panel for your entire body if you can afford that. Do what you can afford. Don't put it off. Don't go, oh, I'll wait to get the whole thing. I'll, I'll uh, come up with some way to do it. And then another month and another month and another year passes by. Don't do it. Every day is important. Every single day is important. You have to do all these things. Yeah? You have to at least meditate three to four times a week. Yeah? Using the sensei that I showed you, which is the, it's a biofeedback light therapy unit that affects both light therapy and biofeedback. You're putting, what time you're putting into it, you will get enormous benefit out of it. You get these panels, what time you put into it, you will get enormous benefit out of it. Yeah? You get the cranial light that I'm recommending. You do that every single day. All your family and all your friends do it every single day and you will all be so much better for it. You won't be frustrated. All your frustration will build up and create a, a complete dissolving of your ATP. You need to meditate. You need to relax. You need this stuff in order to reduce all of that that's going on in your life. You're building a mountain of illness. And now you have to take it all away and you have to have a mountain of health. And you could do that. Imagine you're creating a whole body's worth of weight of ATP every day. Potentially you can do that. I'm setting you up to be able to do that. If you listen to my pujas, include my etheric weavers and those things, you're not only including the light for healing your physical, emotional, and spirit, but you're including your relationship with God. And you're building a better relationship with God. And God always is in communion with you, guiding you and helping you throughout your life and your next life. Yeah. So those are all subtle things, all passive things. You're listening to my video, you're listening to my tapes, you're listening to the music, you're using light therapy. You know, all these are very passive things because it's natural in you. It's natural for you to know God. It's natural to you to know the name of God, and know all the things about God, like I do in all my CDs, in my pujas, I use words and names that are only used in heaven. And those resonate with you, a regular person, just a regular old guy. You're from heaven. Yeah, you're a child of God. And you are being treated that way, and that's what I'm here to do. Is to make sure that you treat yourself in the high reverence that you're meant to. Not that you have to go to a hospital or that you need a doctor. You are the doctor. You are the hospital. You are the church. You are it. I provide all these things so that you could take charge of your life. And you can learn that you have free will. And you're not destined by some weird gene or something 
to make you gay or make you alcoholic or make you crazy. You're not. Yeah. All of that could be reduced and released and changed into who you really are. Yeah. So let's do a puja. So we're going to do the seven rays of God. So what I need you to do is look at the screen. And I set up a video, I created a video that illustrates and shows you what it is I'm doing. Yeah, And basically, I'm creating a sacred planet, yeah, a holy planet with holy people and holy structures like temples and things like that like trees and birds and all the things we have in all the kingdoms. Those are all holy realities, yeah, animated by God. So this is called the seven rays and the seven chakras. And it's basically all about why I make the tools and the invocations that I give in the pujas in order to activate your chakras to go into a state of alignment that align with Jesus the Christ. Yeah? Take you out of any covenant that you've had with Satan. Any relationship that you've had with the dark side. Of any kind. You know, automatically takes you out of it. Because I treat people as though this is how they're born. This isn't about making a new person or actually changing a person. It's about helping a person to reawaken their own true nature and allow that to evolve into higher nature and take responsibility for that very thing. So let's watch this. Just relax.
second ray to your heart center. I invoke the alignment of the sixth ray.
Thanks for paying attention to the puja. The key thing is that the puja and everything in that puja is all about the work that I'm doing. Yeah, the healing, uh, the seven rays, the vajras, the helping of man and woman, the helping of earth and all the kingdoms of earth, and helping them to work together in a unified way, like photosynthesis in a plant. Now, I'm showing how that same thing works in people. And we have to put it to use. Yeah. How meditation is not just something found in Buddhism, but it's something found in our very nature. So we need to put it into effect. And when we do that, we will find that we are highly spiritual, highly gifted, clear-minded, and we overshadow each other by sharing the mind, the greater mind of under understanding. Creative active intelligence is what comes from the Holy Spirit. And everything that I'm sharing is the Holy Spirit. It's creative active intelligence. I created all this stuff actively, intelligently. Now it's going to be applied creatively, actively, and intelligently. That's the Holy Spirit, yeah? And a human being who's in right relationship to God, it's all about right relationship. Right relationship between man and woman. Right relationship between man and earth and woman and earth. Our positions on this planet as holy people, that we were brought here by God under a covenant of God's creation, like Adam and Eve. And that we cannot sin. And we have the ability to not sin. I'm here. Yeah. Utilize my strength, my courage, my being here. Yeah. When, when you're thinking Jesus Christ and he died on the cross and we haven't seen him for 2,000 years, how do I even know he existed? You know, that is a question 
of all the atheists and all a lot of people. That needs to be clarified. I am here. I'm sitting right here talking to you. Yeah? And I am authorizing the sciences, technologies, the government, the education, and the well-being of humanity. And I am doing everything to get rid of all of the process of evil. From conspiracy to lies to corruption to stealing to killing. All of that will be healed. It's not a matter of killing someone because they killed someone. It's a matter of healing this earth, healing everyone and stopping them from doing this. They will naturally hand over their guns. They will never have a gun in a lifetime. They will not be in a military or any form of service that has to do with militants. They'll be in service to save the world, to help those in need, to build homes where people cannot build homes, to fix where nature has destroyed. That's our job. That's service to humanity. That's our humanitarian lifestyle. And we will accomplish that because you're all saints. You're all children of God. I know you. You will do as you're meant to do. Not as a lesbian, you know, not as a famous actor or a famous anybody, but as a person, a human being, behaving in human ways. Because you're healthy. When you're unhealthy, you're possessed. You could be possessed by the devil. You could be possessed by disease. All of those things create characteristics. That's why you can diagnose a disease. It has characteristics. You can diagnose Satan. It has characteristics. You can diagnose the Antichrist. It has characteristics. Look at Trump. Every single thing he says and does is exactly that of the Antichrist. How is that possible? What does he read a book every day in order to properly behave as the Antichrist? You know, because it, it's really not possible unless he is the Antichrist. Because it is his characteristic. And this is discernment and discrimination. This is what healing does. It helps you see the truth. Yeah, it's not hard. It's actually very, very simple. All right. So thank you very much for attending this meditation and this teaching. And I hope to see you or hope all of you see me next week and attend the class and, uh, you know, watch this over and over throughout the week. Uh, get your tools. Get your uh, light therapy. Study. Work hard to get the things that I'm telling you you must have in your life for you, your children, your family, for everybody you know. Not to become a professional light therapist, but to be a good friend that you're here to be. All right. Thank you very much. Enjoy.